Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. Pope Francis concluded his successful historic 12-day journey that began on September 2nd until the 13th. He visited countries in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and Singapore. He encouraged the Catholic faithful to continue their journey and confirmed them in the faith, inviting them to interreligious dialogue. This concludes the longest trip of his pontificate. It lasted 12 days, spanned four countries spread out in two continents, with around 44 hours of fight time and some 32,000 kilometers, 19,883 miles, traveled. During the flight back to Rome, which lasted over 12 hours, the Pope answered questions from journalists. Pope Francis at in-flight interview said vote for the lesser evil in the U.S. election. He defended unborn life and lamented the war in the Holy Land, calling for peace. In Singapore's national stadium of the city-state of Southeast Asia, the Pope presided over the Mass in front of 50,000 faithful. Catholics are the only religious group growing in Singapore. In his homily, he said, even in the face of the great works of human ingenuity, to recognize that, without love, we are nothing, and to embrace brothers and sisters encountered along the way. The Pope arrived at the large sports facility, which hosted over 50,000 people, also occupying the space of the soccer field, after a busy day that began with a courtesy visit to the President of the Republic and continued with an appointment with the Prime Minister, the authorities, civil society, and the diplomatic corps. As soon as he arrived, Pope Francis made a long round of greetings in a golf cart on the athletic track, greeting the children and many sick people in wheelchairs who approach him. He gave a blessing to married couples, took numerous selfies with the young, and gave rosaries as gifts to everyone. Pope Francis visited with a group of elderly and sick people in Singapore and told them their prayers are very important to God. St. Theresa's home, founded 90 years ago by the Little Sisters of the Poor, today cares for 200 elderly residents and is managed by Catholic Welfare Services, a nonprofit social service agency. I ask you to pray for the Church and for humanity. Your prayers are very important to God. Pope Francis took part in an interreligious dialogue with young people, urging them to commit themselves to unity and hope among the youth of various faiths in Singapore. Pope Francis held the interreligious meeting at Singapore's Catholic Junior College. Some 600 participants from more than 50 schools and interfaith and religious organizations attended the event. This marked Pope Francis' final event before his departure from Asia to Rome after his four-nation 45th apostolic journey abroad. During the event, the young people committed themselves to the Pledge of the Future Generation to work for unity and hope. After the Pope's speech, and before a moment of silent prayer, the young people recited, We, the future generation, pledge to be a beacon of unity and hope by promoting cooperation and friendships that nurture the harmonious coexistence between people of diverse beliefs. The Holy Father was greeted with testimonies of a young Hindu, Sikh, and Catholic to whom he encouraged their personal faith journey, but appealed for them to walk together and toward the common good. Pope Francis celebrated an open-air mass in Timor-Leste on September 10th with 600,000 people. This is nearly half the country's population. About 98% of the island is Catholic. The mass was celebrated in Tatsi Tolu, a coastal plain in Timor-Leste. A traditional Timorese dance opened the celebration of Mass. Then, as evening fell, the Pope delivered a homily in Spanish, pausing to allow a Timorese priest to translate his words section by section into Tetum, one of the country's official languages. Pope Francis said, Let us pause to reflect on this image. God makes his saving light shine through the gift of a son. In every part of the world, the birth of a child is a shining moment of joy. And so let us ask together, in this Eucharist, each of us, as women and men, as the Church, as a society, to be able to reflect in the world the strong light, the tender light of the God of love, of that God who, as we prayed in the responsorial psalm, raises the weak from the dust, lifts the needy from the ash heap, 
to make them sit among princes, the people whose best thing is the smile of their children. And a people who teach children to smile is a people who have a future. I wish you peace. I wish you to continue to have many children. May the smile of this people be its children. An angry man threw a knife at woman in a Catholic church and destroyed statues before being arrested. The priest of Sacred Heart Church in France explained, a man came in, he was strong. He threw his knife at a lady and she tried to dodge the knife. He was angry and started destroying the statues. Then he went down to the crypt and people prayed and it continued. On the way out, he broke another image of the Virgin Mary. This is what Father Jean-Baptiste Mpuni told France 3 Côte d'Azur. The incident happened last Friday afternoon. This was reported by BFM. The man was temporarily arrested. He is also suspected of having destroyed another church. Analysis of the video surveillance revealed that the suspect had entered the Catholic Church at around 2.40 p.m. He was wearing capri pants and a backpack and looked like a tourist. Nothing is known about the suspect's identity or his motive for the crime. Shortly after 3 p.m., the municipal police arrested him in a nearby street. This was praised by Anthony Boré, the deputy mayor of Nice, on the social media service X, formerly Twitter. Many similar attacks have occurred in France at Catholic churches in the last few years. A statue of Our Lady was left standing after a fire destroys a church in Nevada that offered the Latin Mass. On September 7th, a fire destroyed the Holy Spirit Mission Church in Nevada, USA, that celebrates the Latin Mass. After which the bishop of the area rushed to the church to try and rescue the Blessed Sacrament. According to Nevada news outlet My News 4, the church was burned in the Davis Fire, which burned 5,596 acres and damaged 14 structures in the Washoe Valley, where the church is located. The fire led to an evacuation, road closures, school closures, and power outages. The fire department determined that the fire broke out in Davis Creek Campground in Washoe Valley. However, investigations are ongoing as to the source of the fire. In an image shared on Facebook by the Diocese of Reno, a statue of Our Lady can be seen left standing, with the mission church destroyed in the background. The bishop, Most Reverend Daniel Mugenborg, wrote, We were saddened beyond words at the smoldering debris that was once the house of God. As an immediate sign of hope, we saw the undamaged statue of the Blessed Mother standing in watchful attention over the site of the former Mission Chapel. The Blessed Mother is particularly close to her adopted children in Christ when they suffer affliction and distress. Unfortunately, the intensity and duration of the fire had completely destroyed the tabernacle and all its contents. The heat was so intense that it actually fused metallic pieces together. As such, nothing remained of the Blessed Sacrament. Our next effort was to recover important documents and sacred vessels from the office safe and the sacristy safe. We did retrieve some intact documents from the office safe, but unfortunately, the sacristy safe was unable to endure the fire. Most of the contents were severely damaged or destroyed. This includes the historical sacramental records of the mission. We did recover parts of the monstrance, a chalice, and the holy oil stocks, but even these were badly damaged. I trust that God, who has been accomplishing good work in you and for you, will bring it to fulfillment. I hope that you share that trust and confidence as well, and that the experience of this tragedy may become a source of deepened faith, greater commitment, and blessing for your community. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Catholic News World's channel. God bless.